In this collection of slides, we're going to investigate communication techniques that we classify as non-coherent communication techniques. And in this first video, we're just going to introduce what we mean by non-coherent communication and uh, start giving some motivation for why we want to use these types of techniques. So here's the overall outline, but we are going to focus on just the introduction here in this video. And we'll get into all the mathematical details about the receiver structure, what the optimum decision rule is, error probabilities that we always like to compute, and then also some specific instances of non-coherent communication later on in the presentation and videos. So first of all, let's think about what we've been doing. What we've been doing is using a carrier modulated signal to embed information. And at the receiver, we have assumed that we have had some estimate of the carrier phase. And the notation we've been using that is phi hat. That is our estimate of the carrier phase. And we assume that it's either approximately equal to the true carrier phase, or it's identically equal to the carrier phase. And these techniques we have classified as coherent communication because we know what the phase is. That's what we define as coherent communication. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at techniques that do not require having the exact phase or an estimate of the phase. And these are what we call non-coherent communication schemes. So why would we want to do this? One reason to do this is that it kind of simplifies the receiver. In general, to be able to get phi or an estimate of phi, we need to have some signal processing algorithm or some piece of hardware to provide that estimate. It just doesn't magically show up at the receiver. So typically you're going to need some type of phase lock loop to actually provide you that coherent reference. If you're using a non-coherent technique, you don't need that phase lock loop, so it simplifies your receiver design. Another reason that you might need to use a non-coherent technique is maybe your transmitter hardware itself has a lot of phase variation. You know, it's supposed to have this stable phi, but it kind of varies with time. So maybe we have a phase lock loop at the receiver and we're trying to track the phase of the carrier, but because of non-idealities in the transmitter, even tracking it is a hard thing to do. So maybe even if we try, we can't do it as well as we would like. Sometimes the systems that we're working on, like wireless channels, themselves distort phase. So sometimes maybe our transmitter is perfectly good, maybe we have a phase lock loop at our receiver, but maybe the channel itself is distorting the phase in such a way that makes tracking what's coming in a very difficult thing. Or maybe the scheme that we're using makes tracking the carrier phase difficult. For instance, in frequency hop systems, these are systems that jump around from frequency to frequency to frequency. Every time that you do that jump at the transmitter and you switch to a new carrier frequency, that means your phase lock loop at the receiver is going to have to reacquire and latch on to that new carrier phase. So that's just a very difficult thing. So there's just a whole multitude of reasons why trying to track the carrier phase at the receiver is complicated. It requires more hardware. Or, even if you try, it might be a very difficult thing to do. So this is some motivation for why we want to use non-coherent communication techniques. In our discussion of non-coherent techniques, we're going to keep things pretty simple. We're going to restrict ourselves to just binary non-coherent communication. So when we do binary comms, that means we just have two signals. The signals that we're going to look at are going to have this form. So SI of T, where I can be 0 or 1, those are the two signals. We have signal S0 and signal S1. The general form we can write as this, square root of 2A times the baseband pulse shape A sub I of T times a carrier, and that carrier has some phase, phi sub I, and it also has a phase theta sub I, which can vary as a function of the message signal. And it, as usual, is limited on time between 0 and capital T. That's what the pulse function P sub T does. You can also write it this way. If you want to lump the PT of T, the baseband pulse shape A sub I, and the amplitude A together, we could call that M sub I. And then we could write it in this slightly more simplified version. But really all we've done is kind of lump some of these parameters into M sub I of T. So this is the general form we are going to work with. 
And depending on the choices we make, we could either do amplitude modulation or phase modulation. If we leave, or basically set the theta i to zero and only alter a sub i's, then that's what we call amplitude modulation because we're changing the amplitude of the cosine. If we leave these constant and only change the thetas, that's what we call phase modulation. So depending on what choice we make, we can either get a phase modulated signal out of this scheme, this general mathematical form, or we can get a amplitude modulated signal out, amplitude or phase. So let's think about that just a little bit. Our signal model, SIFT, allows for both phase modulation and amplitude modulation. But one thing we're going to have to do is we're going to actually have to avoid using phase modulation because at the receiver, we're going to assume that we know nothing about the carrier phase. So if we were to embed information in theta 0 of t or theta 1 of t, changing the carrier phase, since our receiver can't estimate the carrier phase, we would essentially lose that information. So we're not going to do any phase modulation when we're working with non-coherent schemes. Okay? So since phase modulation is out, that means our kind of favorite basic phase modulation scheme, BPSK, is out. Because BPSK is a phase modulation scheme, it transmits signals that are just different by a factor of pi radians. Okay? So we can't do BPSK if we're doing non-coherent modulation. Similarly, any antipodal binary scheme is out because antipodal signals, we often like to think of them as changing amplitude. We go from a positive signal to a negative signal, but really all we're doing there is changing by pi radians. Okay? So BPSK is out and any antipodal signaling scheme for binary is out when we're doing non-coherent communication. Another thing just uh, to mention here, as usual, we're going to assume equally likely signals. So S0 of T and S1 of T are the two signals that I can transmit, and we're going to assume that they're equally likely. And the notation we like to use for that is that pi 0 equals pi 1 equals a half. So the odds of me sending signal 0 are a half, and the odds of me sending signal 1 are a half.